So a warm welcome to all those joining us for worship today. We have a distinct Nepali uh, theme going on today, hence the Nepali flag. Uh, we've already spent time out in Pokhara on our Zoom transmission talking with Alan and Megan Barker, which was wonderful. And there are a number of people who will be watching this today who themselves have served in Pokhara and Saket, as well as folks who, who still live in Saket. So a warm welcome to everyone. Megan Barker is going to come back uh, in a while and bring her reflections and her challenges about serving God. So let's pray as we begin our time together and then we can sing, I the Lord of sea and sky. Let's pray. Lord, gather us in from across the world today, just like you dis gathered your disciples in all those years ago. May we now come into your presence, just like them. And may we open our hearts to your simple call to follow me. Lord, thank you that you do not call us to anything without also giving us the resources to cope. So thank you for all of those people who have served you overseas, um, uh, Alan and Megan and all the other people that are watching now. You have always been enough. You are a God of enough and more. And so we worship you this morning. Thank you for Alan and Megan particularly and their wonderful witness of your gospel. They have laid aside so much for you, Lord, but you have blessed them so richly in return. Hold them, we pray, in your strong love. Through Christ our Saviour. Amen.
prayer for those who go and for those who stay. I wonder who you might be in this picture. Are you in the boat going or are you standing on the shore? Both called, one to go, one to stay. If you are going, then what would be the resource in the boat that you would need most? If you are staying, what resources could you put into the boat? We're all called to labour in God's kingdom. Loving God, help us all to hear your call to serve and how we can do that practically. As those who go and those who stay, we bring our prayers for Nepal to you in the quietness now. Praying for wholeness, praying for healing, praying for prosperity and praying for justice. Lord of the whole world, those who stay and those who go, in your mercy hear our prayer. Amen.
spirit lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith would be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Hello from my home office. Um, this is where I spent the first three weeks of lockdown mostly and occasionally I have a day at home where I um, can catch up on admin and do some BMS work. Normally, um, as you may be aware that we're actually seconded by BMS World Mission to an organisation called INF, 
um, International Nepal Fellowship. And every so often, they give me a day to catch up with paperwork. But mostly, I'm in the OT department, um, occupational therapy department, working with my Nepali colleagues, which is a privilege and a blessing. And um, you will have seen the PowerPoint. Uh, it's a shame you didn't get to see all of the, um, the commentary that we put with it. But basically, that was a reflection on the fact that we've been here for 20 years and some things we've got used to and some things we haven't. Um, and we, we put some pictures of that on the, on the PowerPoint. But along with that, we've been thinking about, so what does it mean to serve God, uh, specifically for us, serving God overseas? Um, <clears throat> so when we first came out here way back in July 20. 2000, then we came with the verse from Joshua 24, 15, which is, but if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day, whom will you serve? Whether the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. And um, that we came out with that as our family verse um, when us and our three children, who were 11, 12 and 14 at the time, set out for um, a life of service in Nepal. But what does it mean? And one of the things that's really been um, on my heart and that I was thinking about actually my last trip to the um, Midwest, to Circuit, where your pastor has visited, um, while I was there on my own, Alan stayed at home, then I was pondering on this, what is service? And um, particularly, and I'll come back to it, on Nehemiah 8 verse 10, which as it happens was Alan's baptismal verse, the joy of the Lord is your strength. So what does all that mean? And one thing that was really struck me, um, well, both of us over the last couple of years probably, is that service isn't about results. Now here in INF where we're seconded, there's a lot of use of log frames. Um, and in those, there's a lot of objectives and we have to meet certain outcomes are required. And we have to meet those targets. But service isn't about meeting targets. Service is about obedience. God doesn't ask us for results, but he asks us for a heart of obedience and a life of just doing what he's calling us to do. Um, and I find that actually quite liberating because over the years, there is a pressure, especially for us as missionaries, when we write our newsletters back home, um, that we're supposed to be able to write about lots of things that have been happening, you know, and people that have become Christians and the way that we've um, been able to see God um, at work. And sometimes there are long periods when we don't actually see results as would be, I don't know, as would be generally accepted. But we do know that we're here serving God with obedient hearts and that this verse continues to be um, a verse that's on our hearts. In fact, we have posters of it on our kitchen wall um, above the dining table. But given that it's not about results, and so we can't get our satisfaction from ticking boxes and getting results, then while we're serving, where does our joy in service come from? And that's why we were focusing on um, Nehemiah, or I've been focusing on Nehemiah, um, chapter 8, verse 10, as I said. Because it says, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Now let's think about the context of this verse. This verse was a response, or requesting a response, after the people had stood listening to Ezra read the law out loud from daybreak to noon. They'd been standing there, weeping as they listened. But Nehemiah told them to go away and um, to celebrate. Now, when we think about celebrating the Lord, maybe we think about coming to church and having a good worship time. 
um, or having a longer prayer time in the mornings and coming in with a long quiet time. But actually, what does he say here? He says, enjoy choice food and sweet drinks and share with those who don't have. And then the joy of the Lord is your strength. And this struck me that actually the joy of the Lord doesn't have to come from being super spiritual. The joy of the Lord can come from enjoying the everyday things of life and just relaxing and being still before God, doing the things that you like doing. You know, it was called a sacred day, but the sacred day was about having choice food and sweet drinks. And sometimes that's what God wants for us, just to enjoy the ordinary things of life. Um, and it's easy to forget about those things. And especially during these days of lockdown, uh, it takes more effort to focus on, well, what's been good about today? What can I thank God for today? Um, and another verse that's been quite important to us during our life here in Nepal has been Matthew 6, 33, which says, Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. And again, this relates to obedience. You know, we're just doing what he calls us to do. We want his glory to be seen in our lives. Um, just in the everyday things that we do, Alan and I are not evangelists. We are not called to preach and um, help people into the kingdom in that direct way. Um, we're called to serve through our professions, which makes us a good fit for Nepal, where we're not allowed to evangelise outwardly. Um, so... We've seen over the years that as we've sought his kingdom, and we're hoping that by our behaviour, by what we model, by our love for others, we are demonstrating a little bit of heaven on earth to people in the way that we can affect their lives and change lives through our work. And in doing that, if you keep your eyes open, you see that God sometimes just encourages you along the way with little things that um, you need to notice. And so we were struck sort of two or three years in when we were living in Kathmandu. This first um, sort of really hit us because when we were in England, our children had often asked for a dog. And we lived, we lived in a flat. Alan was warden of sheltered accommodation. It just wasn't right for a dog. I mean, if we were going to have a dog, we wanted a big-ish dog. And then we came to Kathmandu and lots of people have dogs. They have them as guard dogs. Um, they just... It, it's not difficult. We had a house on a compound that was our area and we had a beautiful black Labrador. But we saw that as God saying, you know, this is something you wanted. Here you are. Thank you for coming to Nepal. Thank you for serving in this way. And to the children, because it was the children that had asked for a dog. Thank you for coming with your parents to serve God here in Nepal. And a slightly comical side, Alan, you know, we were 39 when we came to Nepal and you know, approaching midlife crisis. And one of the things that Alan had always wanted was a trial bike. And what do you know? We had, while we lived in Kathmandu, a trial bike. And he used to ride around on his trial bike and take the children out and we'd go out as a family. Um, I had a little scooter, I still have a little scooter. And you know, again, we opened our eyes and saw, actually all these things would be given to you as well. God has given something that he probably never would have, well, quite definitely never would have had in England gone out trial biking. But here, actually, because of the nature of the roads, just going from A to B, a trial bike is quite useful. Um, so that was just something to, you know, God gives us joy in the little things. If only we open our eyes and see his provision, his goodness, his generosity and his love for us as we serve him. And then I was pondering some more about what is joy? Where does joy come from? And I was thinking about the fact that you can't be joyful if you've got no hope. Um, and um, we've been doing Bible readings with an organisation called The Bible Project. And the guy, Tim, one of the um, main people in that, he says, I'll read a quote from him, in the Bible, hope is about waiting. Not for circumstances to change, but for God himself. God's character and his promises to rescue and restore our world 
are the only things that endure from generation to generation. And so, the only option we're left with in times of uncertainty is to cultivate the difficult virtue of patient hope in God's promises. And in Romans 12, 12, it says, Love must be sincere, hate what is evil, cling to what is good, be devoted to one another in love, honour one another above yourselves, never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervour serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer, share with the Lord's people who are in need, practice hospitality. And this comes from the same chapter that um, at the beginning, the first few couple of verses talk about offering our bodies as living sacrifices, thinking about ourselves with sober judgment. We're all one body with different gifts. We must be sincere in our love, devoted to one another, never lacking in zeal, joyful in hope, patient in affliction and faithful in prayer. It's about sharing, it's about reaching out. And I find when I focus on me, my joy diminishes. When I focus on others and I'm able to just reach out and touch someone else's life, then my joy increases. And it's amazing, isn't it? Just doing an act of kindness can bring joy to our hearts. Um, but wallowing in self-pity, which I am prone to do sometimes, um, you know, it takes away that joy. We need to be joyful in our hope and sharing our hope with others and remembering where is our hope to be found. It's found in Jesus Christ and only in Jesus Christ can we have hope. Look at the mess this world is in. Um, not only COVID, all the lockdown, all the um, kind of knock-on effects of this COVID and what it's doing to people's lives. And yet we know, even though it's a mess, we can fix our eyes on Jesus. We know we have hope in him. And from that hope, we can be joyful and we can serve God with our whole hearts and our whole bodies and just know that he will bless us and he will give us his gifts of encouragement along the way. May the Lord bless you as you ponder on this and continue to serve him in your church, in your lives, in your neighbourhood. Thank you for listening.
Thank you, Megan, for that word. Uh, I found it um, really encouraging personally, particularly a reminder to us about the serving, that it doesn't have to be that burdensome and, and, and religious. I thought that was really a really good word for me personally. But also that to look for those blessings in the ordinary, that God still blessed you. You didn't miss out on anything in life by going over to Nepal. Um, so thank you for that. And thank you for Alan as well joining us this morning. It's been a fabulous day. Um, it's a pity we couldn't be together, but I still think it's been wonderful. And I think it's been, um, I don't know, extra special just doing it like this. And I'm sure in the future um, there'll be time when we can meet up again. Um, but we will be praying for you as a church and we will resource you as much as we can as we stand on the shore. Um, if you let us know what you need, just uh, keep in touch um, and know that we're praying. I'd like to pray for us all now, uh, just as we finish, as we close. Um, a prayer maybe to make a response to some of the things that Megan were, uh, was saying earlier. Um, and I'm going to pray in the first person. Obviously, if you want to pause it and just think about those things and then respond later, please do. But um, let's pray together. Lord, let my life be a space in which you can work in the world. Clear away my inner rubbish and fill me with your spirit. Your spirit of healing, delight and peace so that everything I do may be the fruit of your life in me. Lord of my life, I give you my time, my reputation, my worries and any desires. Thank you for, thank you that you receive whatever I offer and you transform it so that this gift of my life is taken up into your great energy of love. Amen. And it would be good if we finished our time together, wherever we might be watching, by saying the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.